John, welcome back to Focal Point AFR Talk. Great to have you in the conversation. Last segment here on this Friday edition of Focal Point. One more clip before we go back to the phones. This is Joe Biden. And this was a very important moment in the debate. Now, Joe Biden didn't realize the significance of what he was saying here because he was basically telling conservatives what's going to happen if they don't get motivated and vote their values on November 6th. This is what's going to happen. This is a solemn promise from Joe Biden about what they will do in the second term. Let's listen. The court, the next president will get one or two Supreme Court nominees. That's how close Roe v. Wade is. Just ask yourself, with Robert Bork being the chief advisor on the court for, for Mr. Romney, who do you think he's likely to appoint? Do you think he's likely to appoint someone like Scalia or someone else on the court far right that would outlaw, plan, excuse me, outlaw abortion? I suspect that would happen. I guarantee you that will not happen. We pick two people. We pick people who are open-minded. They've been good justices. So keep an eye on the Supreme Court. Was there a litmus test on them? There was no litmus test. We picked people who had an open mind. So Joe Biden says, we want people to have an open mind. Uh, That's ridiculous. That's absurd. They have an open mind except on abortion. Joe Biden said there's no way we are going to bring a Supreme Court nominee forward who hasn't made up his mind on abortion to protect the right of abortionists to chop up babies in the womb. If If that judge is not determined to protect that practice in America... There's no way that guy's getting past us and getting on the Supreme Court. So basically, Joe Biden reminding the American people, look, what's at stake in this election November 6th is the next judge or two that gets on the Supreme Court. So that, uh, you know, when you think about that and you're looking at, you're looking at the next 30 years, I mean, you have a Romney administration, Obama administration, that goes for four years and then something happens in 2016. Supreme Court justices basically are forever So what Biden is reminding us, that's probably the most significant decision that we're going to make or the most significant implication of what happens on November 6th is Supreme Court nominations. Let's go to Ricky in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Ricky, you're on Focal Point with Brian Fisher. What's on your mind? Uh, Yes, I talked to you, Brian, a few months back. uh, You know, I I told you that uh, Obama's not going to be the next president because of David Wilkerson's prophecies. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll go in detail later on, but uh, the thing is, I'm commenting on the uh, the State Department's fiasco of the uh, the you know the murder of the uh, Ambassador Stevens. Yes, I, I think it was an inside job uh, because Hillary's right hand woman is what the sister sister uh, motherhood sisters or whatever Muslim. She's a Muslim. The right hand. Uh, yeah, the, the, yeah, she's the aide and advisor to Hillary Clinton is Huma Abedin, who's been very active in the Muslim Brotherhood. Right, so she knew where the safe house was, and she knew where the Terracotta or, mm-hmm. or the Brotherhood exactly where the ambassador would be at. And since Obama is a Muslim, I mean, you said his reign to uh, uh, no, nobody but God, Allah is true, you know, that he's definitely Muslim. I think this was, you know, the Qaeda called him up and said, look, man, we want to take out this ambassador, and that one of the callers and investors program said the ambassador was actually Jewish, so that, that kind of helped connect the dots. Like, hey, this guy's Jewish, go ahead and take him out. Mm-hmm. I believe that uh, Clinton and Obama's guilty of murder and treason should be tried and shot and hung. Well, and I'll tell you, Ricky, uh, you know, and again, that's maybe a discussion for a- another day, whether there's treason involved here. I, I think uh, you may have a good point there. And I think clearly... And if this was inside information that was leaked from inside the Obama administration, it seems to me it just about has to be somehow this information got to these terrorists where that safe house was. They tracked him down to that place. They had to find out from somebody inside the Obama administration. Uh, and whoever leaked that information, that's treason, got four dead bodies, and that is, uh, that's a very serious crime. All right, Ricky, listen, I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that. Let's play a couple of uh, sound bites. Maybe we'll have time to squeeze in a phone call or two before the end of the segment. Uh, This is Charles Krauthammer talking about Joe Biden, and you'll pick up a theme here. We'll just play these kind of back to back to back. But here's Joe Biden talking about, uh, I mean, here's Charles Krauthammer talking about Joe Biden's demeanor last night in the debate. Look, I think the debate happened at several levels. If you read the transcript, I think it's dead even. If you heard it on radio, Biden won. If you watch it on television, he lost. In the transcript, if you just look at the raw arguments. I think it was even because each side had points to make. It made them, uh, I think, uh, on balance, not one side was stronger than the other. If you heard it on radio, what you'd he- you heard was Biden being aggressive, forceful. He was sort of on the attack all the time. 
and he pushed the argument his way. He did a lot of interrupting as well. And Ryan reacted with, I thought, excessive deference, allowing himself to be cut off and often just ending with a point that you might understand, for instance, when he talked about the Catholic bishops. Uh, he made a point after Biden had said, oh, the bishops of the, the Catholic Church is not going to be compelled to do anything under, under Obamacare. Uh, Ryan said, well, then why is it that the bishops are suing the administration? But that was almost an aside, and it was lost, and, and then it was overridden by the next question. But if you put them all together and you end up with television where you saw the demeanor that the vice president had in regard to Ryan, I think that undid the advantage in rhetoric that he had in carrying the debate. It was so disrespectful. I agree with Chris Wallace. It was sort of almost unprecedented and hugely condescending. I think that undid the force of his arguments. And I think in the end, if it's television, you lose. I think he's exactly right. I think uh, Biden, I mean, I, I've heard from more than one people just wanted to reach into the TV screen and slap that smirk right off of his face. Now, here's a CNN focus group member. So this is CNN now. They're in the tank for Obama. Here's a focus group member for CNN and, and the response of this focus group member to Joe Biden. Let's listen. I thought Paul Ryan had a better command of the tax figures, the explanations that he gave. He seemed to be educating us, trying to teach us hmm. until Joe Biden would bumble in and try to distort things by overriding him, talking, being a buffoon in general. And I was very disappointed in the vice president acting that way. As I said before, I think it gives good credence to term limits. <laughs> so. So she's saying, look, he tried to be Conan the Destroyer, but he still wound up being Mr. Potato Head. He was a buffoon in general. Now, now Frank Luntz does uh, these focus groups for uh, Fox News, and here's what a member of his focus group had to say about the debate last night. First, to describe Paul Ryan's performance tonight, let's start in the back. Paul uh, Ryan, uh, first he was facing an, an, an awesome opponent. So based uh, on those circumstances, thought he did a good job. Go ahead. I thought he was well coached. I thought both Ryan and Martha Raddatz allowed Biden to interrupt way too often. And we'll get to that in a minute. I thought he was a little unfocused. I felt like he was confident and respectful. I thought it was a little disrespectful because he had plenty of time to respond and uh, I thought he jumped the gun. Shouldn't have done it. I thought it was a huge mistake. He was very arrogant and it sticks with me. I can't forget that. Did you have an issue with it? Yes, I did. I thought it was disrespectful. So here are a focus group saying, look, it was arrogant, and that's what stuck with me. You know, and I think that's the reality. Uh, Biden's smirk, you, you, that's what you remember. I mean, I've seen pictures this morning of him next to, uh, you know, his, his face, his expression from the debate next to the Joker, and you can't tell the difference between them. And that's what people are going to remember from this debate. Now, here is CNN, Gloria Borger. Now we're getting way left. Here's Gloria Borger. Here's what she had to say about Biden last night. It was night. condescending at times to Paul Ryan, and I think I could have done with a lot less eye-rolling uh, and chuckling uh, on the part of Joe Biden. So there's Gloria Borger, hardcore leftist. He was condescending. Uh, he should have done a lot less eye-rolling and a lot less chuckling. Here is David Gregory, NBC News, what he had to say about Biden. The smile, the laugh. Uh, I think a lot of people may view that and think that he was a little too hot, too aggressive, maybe condescending. So that's David Gregory also saying that Joe Biden came across as condescending. So even people on the left are saying, look, that's how he came across. And trust me, ladies and gentlemen, that is not good. People aren't even going to remember what he had to say. In fact, you know, after a while, it was just a blizzard of facts and figures and statistics. Hard to keep track of everything. But what you remember is that smarmy smirk on Joe Biden's face. Let's go to the phones. Let's grab one from Travis in Houston, Texas. Travis, you're on Focal Point with Brian Fisher. What's on your mind? Hello, Sam. Yeah, what's on my mind is a, a, a verse in Second Thessalonians two three. Yes, sir. Where, uh, yeah, where it says, um, "Let no man be de let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall come." Talking about um, what we believe to be the great falling away of the church. Um, except first comes the falling away first, and that then the man of sin be revealed, the great man of sin be revealed. And uh, I just feel that the church today is in a very fragile state with the with um, just our morals, the, especially with the youth, because what they're being taught in the public school system, uh, where pretty much we feel guilty for standing up for our morals. 
for uh, when we say a woman doesn't have, should not have the right to choose, or that uh, a man does not have the right to lay with another man or a woman with another woman, and you feel guilty because according to the left, you know, yeah. they just want to be loved, yeah. and so on and so forth. But I just, it just, it really, we should rejoice on one sense, but at the same time, it really, it really hurts my spirit knowing that our youth is in great danger. Yeah, if we don't if we don't rise up and truly teach them the truth. Yeah, well, good. Uh, that's a good word, Travis, and I appreciate that. And we need youth groups to do that. I mean, we we need. I think we need young men to start becoming part of men's groups at age twelve and thirteen instead of being kind of siphoned off into youth groups. We got to grow them up in a hurry. Last call of the hour. Let's go to Joel in Westerville, Ohio. Uh, Joel got about thirty seconds. What's on your mind? Uh, hey, Brian. Thanks for taking my call. You I bet. Just, I was listening to the debate, watching with my dad last night, and I, he said that. Uh, I said that unlike Obama, Biden was at least awake. Uh-huh. And so I want to ask is, do you think that Biden's arrogant attitude will end up hurting the Obama-Biden ticket as a whole? Could you just quickly respond to that? All right. Thank you, Joel. You know, I think it will. I think it will because there was more anticipation for this debate because of how dismally Obama performed. Everybody was looking to Biden to pull his fat out of the fire, and he didn't do it. He did not do it last night. In fact, I think he irritated a lot of people. He irritated women. He irritated independents. So, again, uh, the vice presidential debates overall are not that big a deal. But what Biden did last night is he hurt the Obama-Biden ticket. Now, after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you to him be the dominion forever and ever. Bow low before God, stand tall before man, stand in the gap. Never forget, we are fighting a winnable war. See you Monday. The views and opinions expressed in this broadcast do not necessarily reflect those of a